Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast here on CNBC TV 18. We were just talking about the global setup, but let's now talk about all of the cues that you should track as we get into this trading session. We have our research team here with the trade setup and all of the stocks that are likely to be in focus today as well. Nigel, Rima, and Vivek all join me now. Guys, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, Rima, let me come to you first. We were just talking about the global setup. Definitely looks like we'll get a negative start on the back of that, but take us through everything we should watch for. Uh, it's quite disappointing, right? Um, you know, just earlier this week, we thought that the markets are breaking out. Yesterday, we had a very strong start. The Nifty build went on to levels of 18,100. But then the rally fizzled out. And by the end of it, absolutely flat. The last stick on the Nifty was actually unchanged. It's only on account of the adjustment that we managed to have a green tick going for itself. But all in all, yesterday as well, there were some signs of fatigue in the uh, large cap uh, names and in the index. And today, you're starting off on the back foot because of the global queues. Well, the immediate support, which is likely to be breached at open, is at 17,970. Uh, this was important because the markets did face resistance around these levels. It was also um, you know, around where the 100-day moving average is. If we convincingly break below that, perhaps it could be a bit of a bother for the bulls. The resistance on the way up, we're far away from it, will be 18,200 to 18,250. Yesterday, you had both the FIs and DIRs buying to the tune of 15,070 crore in the cash market. But remember, the inflows by the institutions would have been affected by the interglobe aviation block deal, which was about 2,300 crore rupees. Um, global markets are subdued. U.S. markets, as you've been pointing out, ended lower with the Dow down 1.3 percent. The Nasdaq was down 1.8 percent. Today, focus on the FTSE semi-annual uh, review that takes place. And just a quick word on uh, Q3 and the entire aggregate picture now that the earnings season is done. This is a report from Motilal Oswal where they're saying that after Q3 earnings, we've cut our nifty EPS by 1 percent. The FI24 EPS remains unchanged, but because of the miss that we've seen in metals, in oil and gas, the overall nifty EPS has been cut by 1% for FI23. Uh, they also highlighted the broad-based slowdown seen in consumption, both stables and discretionary, which has hit corporate earnings. So um, Q3 earnings season hasn't been that great. On an aggregate basis, there have been a few downgrades, and the nifty EPS estimate has come down by 1%. Back to you. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for getting us all of those cues uh, that we should track. But let's also talk about the individual names that could be in focus today. There's been lots of stock-specific action, so Vivek is here to fill us in. Well, good morning. You know, quite a few stocks on the radar. First on our list is Shareflow India. The company declared its results, and it's a very robust set of results that's been declared. So revenues jumped up almost 18%, coming in close to the 1,795 crore mark. EBITDA, core EBITDA has jumped up almost 20%, and margins to quite steady, almost 40 basis points higher on a year-on-year -year basis. On the back of that, profitability has gone up almost 21% higher again on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, the other stock on our radar, you know, and watch out for the auto ancillary space, uh, uh, so says Stella colleague Nimesh, that uh, uh, Prycol, now this particular company, we understand that Minda Corp has launched the book to acquire almost 15.7% stake in the company via the reverse book building process. So we understand that Minda Corp is looking to invest almost 400 crore in Prycol to acquire up to 15 15.7% stake in the company, and this particular stake would be bought at 209 rupees a share. Uh, we also understand that the base book for this particular uh, deal is at 10.8%, with an upsize option available for an additional 4.9%. Uh, also, keep an eye out for NLC India. The company has uh, announced to the exchanges that they are in the process of setting up two separate thermal power plants. Uh, now, the first power plant is uh, uh, having a capacity of 1,980 megawatt, and this is going to be in Kanpur. The other one is going to be 2,400 megawatt in Odisha. Keep an eye out for uh, all of the telecom stocks. You know, the December telecom data has come in. Uh, so Reliance Geo has added almost 17 lakh uh, users in that particular month. Uh, Bharti Airtel has uh, continued to add uh, and 15.26 lakh users, while on the other hand, Vodafone Idea continues its loss as far as uh, users and subscribers are concerned. 24.7 lakh users is what uh, the company actually lost. Lastly, Indigo, as we had indicated yesterday, Shobha Gangol sold almost 4% stake in the company via the block deal yesterday at 1887 rupees a share. 
All right, those are a lot of stocks to track. Vivek, thanks a lot. We are going to keep all of these on our radar. Finally, let's also talk about the future of space now. And Nigel is here to fill us in with all of the details. Hi, Nigel. Well, morning, Pavitra. You know, the quality that we made yesterday was taking some money off the table could be a prudent strategy. That worked yesterday, right? Because the Nifty came off considerably from the high point of the day. The FIs, yes, they've been buying in the cash market, uh, give or take, uh, you know, those large tra uh, block trade rates that we have saw seen. But the FIs in the FNO market, they got back to their shorting ways. They added close to 4,500 short contracts the short positioning is at around 74% odd. The options data will be rather interesting, though. You know, the clear indication is 18,150 to 18,200. The bears want to defend that mark, and that's why the 18,100 call, well, that was getting written very, very aggressively yesterday. On the downside, though, you had the 18,100 put and the 18,000 put. Both of them did see a fair bit of writing. Between both of them, there were more than 40 lakh shares getting written out there. And just going by that data point, the sense you get is 17,900, 17,950, those put writers, they're playing that that level holds out. And for me, the 17,950 mark becomes very, very important because that's where, in fact, you know, the put, uh, put writing data suggests that there is some bit of support. And that uh, ties in perfectly with the 100 DMA. So you need to track the first star lows, hope that, in fact, you know, we could uh, trade about that 17,950 and then maybe pr play for a bit of a bounce. But otherwise, it's going to be a difficult trading session. And the Nifty Bank that's been underperforming or not performing that much because the IT index uh, has found its form in the last few days. The IT index is going to be under pressure, so the Nifty Bank will have to play a role of its own. 41,200, we have said that all this week, that 41,150, 41,200, crucial support zone out there. Let's see whether or not the Nif Nifty Bank can hold. Uh, SGX50 suggesting a start, in fact, below the 50, the 100 DMA. So that's going to be a very, very weak start. Let's see whether or not we get a bit of a bounce from those. Back to you. Oh, absolutely. It's 400 points lower on the SGX right now. So let's see how the, how the trading session pans out. Nigel, Reema, Vivek, thanks a lot for joining us and prepping us up for this trading session. We are going to get into another short break, but all of the cues that we have been talking about do have a bearing on the commodities market as well. So we'll tell you what it has meant for crude prices when we come back. Hey guys, welcome back to Power Breakfast. Let's talk about the commodity space now. Manisha joins us with an update. Uh, Manisha, good morning. Looks like there's, uh, you know, continues to be that slide that we've seen in crude prices. Well, yes, Pavitra. We've started a day where we have seen uh, a cross profit taking or decline in many of these commodities. So the crude oil prices have declined yet another day and we are looking at 85 break on the lower side as well. This is as we are looking at the U.S. crude inventories much higher than last year and higher than the five-year average as well. And the U.S. crude inventories have risen for an eighth straight week and this is the highest that you've seen since October 2022. Uh, natural gas prices also have continued to extend losses. We are trading at a two-year low zone to this one as well. Here as well, inventories are nearly 16% higher from where you were in the previous year. Same is the case with Baltic Dry Index. That one is trading at a new 2020 lows across metals as a sector as well, whether it's gold, silver, tin, aluminum. All of these have all these metals have started Asia yet another day on a weaker note. The strength in US dollar index and expectation of higher interest rate hikes from US, all of that seems to be weighing on. All right, Manisha, thanks a lot for getting us that roundup from the commodity space. But here's some very interesting opinion as well. Ray Dalio, the founder of the world's largest hedge fund, Bridgewater Associates, is bullish on India. So speaking at the World Government Summit in Dubai, Dalio said that India will have the highest growth rate in the world and that he expects to see, I quote, a big transformation. Listen in. India will have probably the greatest growth rate, the fastest growth rate economically, have the, um, the greatest transformation um, of any country. So here we are in the UAE, and you think about what's going on here and in Saudi and so on, or you go to Singapore and you look at what's happening in the ASEAN countries, Indonesia, Vietnam and so on, and you look at India. It's an advantage through all history and world wars India will do great, I, th I think. And then the question is, what does that mean for the rest of us? All right, that is Ray Dalio's big India bet. But with that, we're out of time on this edition of Power Breakfast. The Asian markets um, largely lower, not quite as bad as the U.S., but we are seeing cuts of between six-tenths of a percent to eight-tenths of a percent come through. The SGX Nifty is down 110 points now at the low point of the day. So thanks a lot for tuning into Power Breakfast. A very interesting Bazaar Morning Call is up next.